Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to another Money Monday on the Daily Huddle. Excited to see your faces here on camera and also excited to, to reach out to those of you that are listening on other platforms um, as we carry on our series uh, where we have our guest expert, Ms. Elmira Raven, who is going to be teaching us a little more about nonprofits. Um, we're excited about that. But before we get started, um, who can tell us how you plan a fundraiser for the earth? <laughs> how do you organize a fundraiser for the earth? Anybody know? <laughs> it's the best joke you will ever hear in your entire life. Anybody, anybody, anybody? You plan it. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> That's not bad. No, it's, it's horrible. Oh, God, it's funny. <laughs> it's horribly funny. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us today. I'm Kimberly Odie. This is my husband, Zach, and we have a, a special guest that you guys, if you've been tuning in, have seen her a couple of times. Miss Elmer Raven is helping us talk about nonprofits today. And our question today, what is our question today? Is what are the three things you need to know when starting a nonprofit? But before we get to that, and before I officially introduce her or reintroduce her, Zach has some questions for you guys. Oh, all right. So um, just on my joke. Okay. All right. We'll do that. Um, morning, Chase. You're front and center in my screen. So uh, I love to hear from you and thank you for being on here again. But uh, what time is it and what are you grateful for today? Grand rising to both of you. Um, the time is now. We are in the present. Can't run from it no matter what. Oh, there we are again in the present. And uh, what am I grateful for today? I'm grateful um, to be once again alive. I've woken up and the possibilities are endless. That's my story. Awesome. Fantastic. Every day's a, every day is a new day, right? Every moment's a new moment. Yes, it is. Fun. Yeah, a, a big point. Thanks Absolutely. for joining us. Hi. Right. Um, Kimberly, where are you and who will you hug today? I am exactly where I say I am. I'm right here. I'm at home. We haven't been home for quite a minute. So super excited about that. And I'm going to hug you today. <laughs> there we lucky go. Zach. There we go. <laughs> He's like, great. I can't wait yeah. for that one. That's what I said, lucky Zach. <laughs> well, good morning, Rashida. How are you? Good morning, my family. Daily Hi, I'm fine. I'm fine. I cannot be better than better. I'm right here with you all guys. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good morning. Good morning. Absolutely. So we want to get started today. So you guys know for the last two weeks, today is week three, and we're going to finish next week with the big culminating event. Um, but we've been speaking with Miss Elmir about nonprofits and just everything that we need to know about why should we do a nonprofit and what's the most important thing and, you know, all of those different questions. So we're going to talk to her today about the three things that we need to know when starting a nonprofit. And we're going to kind of recap a little of last week and give you some new information today. But before we get started, I want to officially introduce her to you guys. So I'm just going to read her bio for you. Pretty impressive over here. Um, Miss Elmir currently owns um, Get It Right with Raven LLC, which provides consulting to nonprofits as a troubleshooter and in the area of board development and all things nonprofit. She's the former executive director of My Sister's House um, from February 1991 to May of 2017, her previous work experience is as follows. She was the Director of Volunteers and Public Relations at My Sister's House, 
from 1989 to 1991, allocations director of Trident United Way and police sergeant, we're going to put that on the list to talk about Miss Elmere, um, <laughs> of Georgia State University, um, issues and family violence coordinator at Trident Technical College from February 2004 to January 2005, and part-time faculty in the human services department from January 2005 to December 2010. Um, her education. So she was, um, she did her undergraduate, I guess, at Webster University, got her master's in counseling, postgraduate studies, um, 58 hours of nonprofit administration, Bachelor of Social Work, and Bachelor of Science in Criminal Justice, all from Georgia State University in Atlanta, Georgia. Ms. Raven has held numerous leadership posi positions on various boards and has received many honors and awards. She is also a sur survivor of domestic violence. So with that being said, thank you for joining us again today, Ms. Elmir. Um, welcome to the to the Daily Huddle. You're just as familiar a face as the rest of us are at this point. So, um, but thanks for joining us. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me again, Kimberly and Zach. And I just wanted to recap um, just a little information from the first two sessions. And the first one, I, of course, told everyone that working in a nonprofit is hard work. So it's not an easy job. And if somebody thinks, oh, I'm just gonna join uh, and create this nonprofit and my life is gonna be easy and just wonderful, um, forget that, that's the wrong concept. <laughs> um, it will be wonderful because you're doing hopefully what you wanna do, but it is hard work. And last week we talked about um, some of the advantages and disadvantages of having and starting a nonprofit and having uh, employee commitment is an advantage because most of the people that work in nonprofits usually are committed to that issue and you get your internal rewards from working in a nonprofit. And I can't really say you're gonna get rich from working in a nonprofit because you're not, but hopefully um, if you plan and look forward to retirement as I did, you will at least be um, financially sound to some degree if you just keep planning and doing what you need to do. Of course, several of the disadvantages is that you do have limited funding because you've got to write grants, you've got to raise the money, um, you experience some social pressure from your family and friends about how much time you're devoting to this nonprofit work. And then you're subjected to public scrutiny because you are a private nonprofit and your records are open to the public. So those are just a few of the things that I want to just quickly uh, review. And so our question for today is, what are the three things you need to know when starting a nonprofit? So I always tell people, you can start a nonprofit but the key thing is, one, you have to keep good records. If you have a nonprofit and you have no records, nothing about your uh, meetings, your uh, meeting minutes, your bank accounts, they're not set up and uh, they're not legible and accountable and you can't tell people where your money went. And uh, that's not a good thing. You're probably not going to last long and you're going to be subjected to a lot of questions. And so as you look at um, starting your nonprofit, you always want to look at, okay, how am I going to market this nonprofit? Number one, what service am I going to provide? What is my target? market. Two, who are your customers? Who are the people that you're planning on serving? Um, if you're one of 20 nonprofits serving the same customers or clients, that's probably going to be a difficult task. And finally, uh, three, what is your capacity to provide those services? Do you have not only the expertise, but the money, the support from the community? a uh, functioning board, which we'll talk about um, next Monday. Mm -hmm. You've got to have those three core things. You have to 
you have your market, your customers, and the capacity to do that nonprofit. So if you don't have those things from the beginning, you're probably going to be a struggling nonprofit. What's the best way? Um, I, I'm sure there are a million ways, but I, I, let's say I have a new nonprofit. And of course, I'm super excited about it, right? Because I think for anyone to start a nonprofit, it's their crusade. It is their passion. It's their soul. It's who they want to be. And mm -hmm. that's 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 it, right? So I have this nonprofit, super excited about it. I want to promote it to the world. How best, what is my best way or best ways to market? So everybody used to tease me about um, my ability to get free PR from media and <laughs> you know, radio and newspapers. You have to know who to connect with. But you also have to have a topic that they're going to be interested in, a marketable topic. They're always looking for news stories. They're always looking for things to write about, to promote on TV, um, to promote on radio. They all have to do a certain amount of free um, PR. So you have to make your own connections. And... I still know a lot of the people from TV and radio. And, and so in some of my other nonprofits, I'm able to use the people I know from my past to help promote those nonprofits that I'm involved in now. Um, how did you meet a lot of those people when you first started? Because obviously now you, you've you yeah. had your entire career <laughs> building that network of people. Mm -hmm. But if I'm just starting out, Brand new nonprofit, brand new to this world. How do I build my network? Okay, for TV, for instance, they have on their website a place where you can promote all your upcoming activities. Um, they have the list of all of their anchors and TV people with their emails. <laughs> uh, you can <laughs> email them and introduce yourself and tell them not your whole history about your nonprofit, just a little blurb and just encourage them to call you for more information or touch bases or whatever. So you do have to do some work. And all of the radio stations, they have different shows, you know, that they do, uh, community-based shows. So you, you've got to do some research yourself. So I researched everything. I had an ongoing list of the stations, both TV and radio newspaper contacts and um and I'll be the first to say you know because I did belong to a number of um, organizations I was able to also capitalize on that you know I think that's important to talk about too um organizations meaning nonprofits like I know you were big in rotary and things like that also so what type of organizations? I think obviously the more you're involved, the more you meet people, the more they know who the, that you are, the more they know you're doing good things and you're a good person and the more they're willing to listen. So what types of things were you involved with outside of your nonprofit? I was a member of um, East Cooper Breakfast Rotary. I, of course, served with our state coalition, which was the Coalition Against Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault. I served on a national organization as well. I am a member of a sorority. Unfortunately, almost everything that I was involved in, I either held an office, was an officer, something, <laughs> something, something, something. So I also got to meet other people and I spoke at almost all the Rotary clubs in the Tri-County area. And I of course, belonged to a church, which I was very involved in. So I knew a lot of people from the church community who also supported my sister's house because most of our Baptist associations, we have associations. And so all the churches are a part of that association. So Sounds my like, contacts really help. It, it sounds like you had what, what I like to refer to as the moral authority to ask for help, right? <laughs> You had you had given right. You had you had uh, been a part of organizations and supported other organizations with your time and with those kind of things. I think that's really important when you're going to go out and support or ask for support from other people to have mm -hmm. a track record 
of giving support yourself and being involved and and wanting to be a a good person. If I show up out of nowhere with no track record of being involved in service organizations or anything, and I say all of a sudden, hey, I want everybody to come give me some help and to help in my cause. I think that um, that's that's pretty interesting to see. And it doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, Usually people that want to do well and start a nonprofit of some sort have been servant leaders uh, through most of their life because that's something they want to do is help. So that that's a big thing that sticks out there that you you've been a servant and you've then been able to ask for other people to do the same. And I, I think that's always key because if people don't know you in the community, then why would I want to support an organization that you're the head of? I don't really know anything about you. I don't know what you're doing. You're not really giving back but you're always wanting the community to give you something. So it's, it has to be a two-way street. And um, I was had at the end of my little bio, let my work speak for me, because I just believe that what I do and stand for, that's a big part of who I am. And I never asked my staff to do anything that I couldn't do, wouldn't have done, and wouldn't be willing to do. So I just have this kind of set philosophy about life and how you should function. And uh, I don't deal with people that are kind of like doing nothing and kind of all over the place. I'm like, yeah, no, that doesn't work. For me. <laughs> yeah. I think I think the word foundation, too, because a lot of people deal with foundations and money and all those kind of things. But anytime you want to build something successful, I think it's all about how you start. Right. It's about the foundation that you build it on. And so I, I, I take that uh, advice from you and that example from you just to say, if I want to start a nonprofit or I'm passionate about something else, I need to get out in that world as first someone that serves under other nonprofits or in other and just learn my way around and also, um, you know, give of my time so that I have that ability to ask of that later. So awesome. Well, and and now they have um, the state nonprofit group that people can be a part of and they offer trainings and seminars. And so there's lots of opportunities for you to meet other nonprofits, opportunities for your board to attend training as well. So there are a lot more opportunities for people to uh, develop their skills and network if they really want to. And I would imagine that most states have something like that. We're talking South Carolina right now from that perspective, right? Yeah, I would would think so. I mean, we we were kind of last in getting ours, but anyway, (laughs) um, it is a, a great organization and I think it's a viable one that has um, served a purpose for many nonprofits. Yeah. So I want to switch the not the subject, but maybe or, or mm-hmm. the, the the direction of the conversation because okay. we've talked about marketing, we've talked about networking, and and obviously the importance of just being connected in your community and and serving before you ask someone to serve for you, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You also mentioned really great bookkeeping and really great <laughs> financials, um, and for a lot of people, they mean well, right? They they yeah. intend to do so much, but because as you know, early nonprofits, right, when they first get started, they're doing everything and they're trying to figure it out, especially if they don't have a background, it's just like any other small business, right? Yeah. Except you're probably more accountable because people can see your books. Um, so being that brand new nonprofit and, and swirling around in the world that you live in, trying to make everything work and everything perfect, so then you can hire those different positions, how do you, what are, what are the, uh, obviously, I'm, I'm sure it's a, a big question, but what are the basics that you need um, from a financial accounting piece to keep up with, um, to make sure that you're accountable to the people that. Are well, I would always recommend either you connect yourself with a bookkeeper or a CPA and that person really needs to be on your board. And then you as the executive director, need to learn everything you can from them. Our um, bookkeeper, who was our treasurer, well, she answered all my questions about QuickBook. I kind of taught myself QuickBook, but um, she was there to help me, and she did all of our um, QuickBook 
accounting and information for me. So, but I knew the information. I knew how to input the data into QuickBook if I had to. I knew what I was looking at. So I I never totally relied on right. my treasurer or CPA. I was very uh, clear about who had access to our bank accounts and who could transfer money or make withdrawals or any of those things. I never was like, oh no, anybody can uh, do this or having multiple people that had access to our financial information. But even things like company credit cards, um, I was like, no, we don't need, we only need three. And, and who were those three? Myself, the program director, and I had one extra in the office with my administrative assistants in case um, I was not there or the, the program director was not there. And I was like, no, everybody mm -hmm. doesn't need a credit card. Everybody doesn't need- Everybody's like, I think I should have lunch today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or even, you know, if you, after we'd grown and, you know, I had vehicles to transport our clients, even gas cards. I'm like, no, we have this many vehicles. We only need this many cards. Mm -hmm. Everybody does not need a card. So, you know, you got to have some really uh, concrete things in place. Everybody had to bring a receipt back. There was no, I get a bill and I'm like, okay, what is this? Where is the receipt that go with this bill? So, I I feel like people, especially people who really don't like uh, correcting or following up with people, that's difficult to do. Mm -hmm. But for me, it was like, I need it. If not, thank you for your donation to my sister's house. Because I don't have to receive. Because that's it. Write it off. Right. <laughs> yeah. I think it's important to know. Um, I, I think it's over here at somewhere, but I'm not quite sure where it is. Um, we read a book years ago called The E-Myth, and it's basically the entrepreneur, entrepreneur can you say that word? Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and it's a fantastic book. And obviously it's talking about being an entrepreneur, but I think it goes here as well. When you talk about um, understanding your skill sets and what you're good at and using those skill sets and surrounding yourself with, with people that have the skill sets that you mm -hmm. don't. So if bookkeeping is not your specialty or right. obviously CPA or whatever, hire the higher appoint those people recruit. invite those people yeah. recruit those people to your board because then they're they're in kind service right they're just out of the yeah. because they're they they have a vested interest in your mission they're going to help you put those checks and balances in place and get that started and and then maybe you know hopefully at some point down the road you have enough money in your nonprofit to hire someone to do that full time for you and, and then manage you, that and take off take it off your plate and then let them do the job that they agreed to do you, th you think yeah. that's hard for some people oh absolutely i mean it wasn't hard for me because if i recruited somebody i felt was qualified then i expected them to do the job not that yeah. i wouldn't ever look at what they were doing but i wasn't trying to do their job to do it also. both yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think it's hard for a lot of type a people especially people that start a nonprofit, to allow other people whether it's nonprofit or small businesses or anything to allow other people to do part of that right yeah. um even i mean it even goes back to your kids you know it's it's hard sometimes to give them that responsibility they can mm -hmm. handle it but you know you're like ah oh, are you sure can are you sure you can do it so um i think that's a good lesson did you have something else and, you want to say? Uh, I, but i, I also <laughs> think that you know if you uh, for me i was I wrote all of our grants. I raised all of our money. So my skill sets were different when we, when I gave them my five-year notice to retire and said, okay, this, this is my job. This is what I do. How are we going to make sure that when I leave, all of these things are still happening? Right. And we ended up having to hire, besides an ED, 
three other people to do pieces of my job. Right. But you had that transition plan in place, which is huge, right? To, to be able Absolutely. To, um, well, awesome. You want to turn it over? We just have a couple of minutes left. Um, next week, okay, I know sure. it's going to be a, a big <laughs> one, right? Because everybody's always asking the questions about yeah. the board. But do you guys have any questions um, for Miss Elmir today? Um, for the end of our show, any nonprofit questions or burning questions you want to ask? Cece's got her hand up. So. Good Thank morning, you. everyone. How Good morning. do we get? Um, how do we get in touch with um, Ravens? Um, her information. I'll put it in the chat as well. Um, her email address is on our Facebook page. Um, so I will put that in the chat and then you can also go to the, the Facebook page, the Daily Huddle Facebook page, and you'll see her post and it's right there in her bio. So I will, I will type that information in now so you guys have it, but you can also um, get it there as well. It's really simple. It's Raven Elmere at yahoo.com. There you go. Last name, first name at yahoo.com. Thank you. I'm not on Facebook. <laughs> oh yeah just just um send me an email i i respond quickly to emails so i just sent it out in the chat too so you guys have it um and thanks for reminding me about that cc not everybody is so i should i should say that too um but it's also in our <laughs> chat um any other questions for us this morning before we wrap up okay well zach you want to talk about that so I, I was just going to say, so we have the, the three things that we're going to, uh, that, that everybody needed to know. Let's go over those three things real quickly um, that, that we were covering today. And then we'll pick up next week on how to uh, build a board. So uh, <laughs> what were those three things? I know the first one, right, was good bookkeeping. And then the second one was basically a good, uh, a good strong uh, need, right, that, that you well, got. Yeah, marketing. 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 And then the third yeah. one was was what? Was um, your capacity and knowing who your customers or clients are. Yeah. So just to recap those bullet points, and that's what we covered. So if you have questions about that, we'll go into a little bit of detail about that uh, at the beginning of next time recapping, and then we'll go straight into the board. I'm so excited <laughs> and appreciate you so much, Ms. Elmer, for being here. Um, and I hope that you guys out there in the Daily Huddle world are getting some good things, because I know I am. So um, well, guys, as we wrap up this morning and we go out into our day, remember our eight tenets. Uh, number one, love. Number two, laugh out loud. Three, stress less. <laughs> eat, eat mostly plant-based. Take care of your body. Give. Sleep. Move, right? Uh -huh. And then lastly, give yourself a pause. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Guys, we appreciate every single one of you and this opportunity to be here and share this time with you. We will see you same time, same place tomorrow on the Daily Huddle, and we'll finish this series next Monday on Money Mondays. See you guys then. Okay, Bye, guys. have a good one. Bye. One love, guys. One love. Bye. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.